Hi fellows, and in this video we are going to look at the electronics and the fuel injection system of the Brixton 125cc. I know that it's very hard to get details. The good thing is I found a lot of stuff and I'm going to take you through that and I will tell you where you can find more information. So let me take you to the bike. Uh, first of all, I'm going to remove the saddle. Now removing the saddle is very easy. You have two screws here in the back and you just need to undo the bolts in the back and then the saddle just comes off. Very simple, like this. Slide it backwards and there you go, it's off. So underneath the saddle guys, uh, we've got a fuse box, a solenoid and then the most important part, this is the ECU. Now the ECU or electronic control unit controls everything that goes on on, on your uh, Brixton and it drives the injector so it will determine how much fuel is needed and for how long uh, to be injected into the intake manifold and it does that based on many different conditions it has to look at the gas throttle position and we'll have a look at the sensor in a few minutes it needs to know where the crankshaft is it needs to know the temperature of the engine it needs to know the oxygen which is coming out of the exhaust it needs to know uh, the mass airflow the air temperature incoming and it needs to know the manifold um, air pressure and it needs to know the manifold uh, air temperature so a lot of input is coming into this ECU and based on that it has a fuel map and based on the settings on the fuel map it will then drive your ignition and it will drive uh, your injectors so this is a very critical element later on I will show you how you can diagnose it by plugging in a diagnostics tool to it um, I know uh, there is very little information on this one. Brixton is not willing to give us anything on that. I've asked Matt several times for it, but I don't get it. But you know what? I don't care because we will do reverse engineering. Okay, so let's look at the uh, sensors now that are input to the ECU. So on the left hand side, uh, we'll find on the intake manifold, we'll find two sensors. The top one is actually not a sensor but it's a controller which is the idle solenoid so this device will actually turn and control the idle running of your engine and it does that by getting signals and i disconnected it so you can see it it gets this from signals coming from the ecu so if your engine is not running pretty well on idle maybe the idle solenoid is not working anymore so you might have to replace this unit or your ECU is getting the wrong signals underneath and this is the one which is important to look at this is your throttle positioning uh, sensor so whenever you turn the gas throttle um, there's a valve inside the intake that will move so if you need power you crank your throttle the valve opens up and then that change will be detected and it will be sent over this cable here to the ECU. So now the ECU knows that you need more power, right? So this is another important sensor. So if you throttle up and it doesn't react, maybe this sensor is faulty. Now I will come back to all these sensors in other videos on how you can check them, what resistance, what voltage you should measure. But right now we're just going to the whole system, as I said before, right? Now, inside the engine, you will find other elements like the crankshaft sensor that's also feeding into the ECU, but I can't show you that one because that's hidden in between. Now, uh, there's a couple more sensors uh, that are important on the intake manifold, and let me show you what those are. On the right hand side, you will find another sensor which is sitting on top of the intake manifold, and this sensor is what we call the manifold air pressure sensor it sensors the vacuum inside the intake manifold and it also measures the temperature it is also very important uh, to decide how much fuel has to be injected because the more power you demand if you open up the throttle the more vacuum is created so this sensor will sense it as well so the combination of the throttle valve that we just looked at and the creation of additional vacuum is an indication to the ECU that more power is required and it can calculate how much. 
And as I said, uh, the ECU will do that calculation and then it will actually drive the injector and the injector is right here. On top of it, you can see the high pressure fuel coming in from the fuel pump. And we look at the fuel pump in a minute because the fuel pump is mounted on the left hand side inside the gas tank. But we'll look on that in a second. So this connector here, this is the connector that will allow the injector to inject fuel or not to inject fuel. So it's the ECU that will determine how much fuel is injected and at what time. And it does that with a pulse. So the wider the pulse on this wire here, the longer the injector will be open, the more fuel will be injected. If the pulse is shorter, then less fuel is injected. And we'll measure some of these pulses as well uh, in our effort to do some reverse engineering. Over here, we have a temperature sensor, and that's also important, and that's also fed back to the ECU, because the ECU needs to know how warm the engine is, right? Because when the engine is cold, you know, in the old days, we would have a choke, but now we'll inject a little bit more fuse, fuel. So that's why the ECU needs to know the, the fuel temperature. Okay, so uh, that's about it on this side, and we have one more important sensor to talk about, and let me show you which one that is. So in the front of the engine, you will find first of all the exhaust and you follow the exhaust, you will come across this sensor here. The sensor with, what is it, four wires on? Now this is the oxygen sensor and it will measure the oxygen in the exhaust. And it feeds that information as well to the ECU. And that also tells the ECU what it should do with less or more oxygen in the outlet uh, by controlling the amount of fuel it's gonna inject. So that's that part. So very important part. If that is faulty, then the engine will not perform as it should. So now let's have a look at the ignition system. All right. Well, the ignition system is rather simple. We've got the spark plug and then we have the ignition coil. And the ignition coil is, guess what? Driven again by the ECU. That's very simple and straightforward. So guys, there's a couple more things I want to show you. That's now, first of all, the fuel pump and the injector you've seen already. And then we'll have a quick look at the uh, regulator uh, because there is a power generator, an electrical power generator inside the engine and that needs all to be regulated and I'll show you that as well. And then finally, I'll show you the air, fil air filter is, but that's just a small little thing. And that will be it for now, but then we'll, in the next videos, we'll be looking at uh, how all this works together and how you can actually measure things because that's the most important part. How can you measure all these different components? But I will have to break it up in multiple videos. But at least by now you have a pretty good idea uh, of all the elements that are making your Brixton work. So let's look at the fuel system. At the bottom of the left hand side of the gas tank, this is where you have the fuel pump. This is a high pressure fuel pump. It's sucking fuel out of the tank and then it pushes it to the injector. Actually through a filter and there's a filter sitting underneath here. If you look underneath, you can see it. Uh, and that filter you need to change every so often. Now, the high pressure fuel pump is driven by a connector here and this is the voltage which is applied again under control of the ECU. So this is how the fuel system is working. And now the last thing we need to look at is a bit about the power system. I mentioned that there is a magneto inside the engine and the magneto provides power and this is the regulator sitting right here on the left hand side on the front of the frame of the um, Brixton. And this is the regulator that's gonna regulate all the power. Now, one more thing we could look at is the air filter. Now remove the side panel. So you need to pull them out from the top like this and then slide it out like so, because this is fixed onto a pin. So don't pull it out because you will break it. Now underneath the left-hand side cover, you find the air filter unit. You can remove the air filter by removing these screws and then you have access to the air filter but that's something we'll do later and on the right hand side you have a similar panel you can pull it off on the top pull it out like this don't pull it on the bottom because then you need to lift it up because there's a little lip there that holds it in place and behind that you have your battery and your blinker box so we looked at all the elements that are making up the working of the engine of the Brixton 
We focused mainly on the ECU, which is this part. Uh, this is a Delphi ECU and the ECU is getting lots of input from all different kinds of sensors. And we looked at all these different sensors. It computes what is required and then it's going to drive the injectors and it will drive the idle solenoid, but it will also drive your tachometer, your RPM meter. That's what comes out of the ECU because he does all this calculation for you. So this is the most important part. Now don't mess around with this. Um, I'm going to show you in a later video on how you can diagnose it, how you can read out error codes. It is not that hard to do, uh, but you have to wait a bit because I have to try out a few things. And if you have any questions, and please shoot uh, the questions at me because I will try to respond to them if I can. And later on, I will show you as well all the details uh, on how you can measure all the different sensors in a static sense and in a dynamic sense. You will need a voltmeter, but that is not that hard to get. I guess everybody will have that. So I hope you enjoyed it and keep watching my Brixton channel, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.